With this tutorial, I want to give you an overview of the main components of a typical commercial pool plant system. So on the schematic here, um, I've tried to keep it as simple as possible because all I want to do with this is give you a broad overview, overview of the main components. So um, what I've left off here, I have left a couple of things off. Um, Otherwise, the schematic starts getting a bit, um, a bit, a bit complicated. Um, but but what I'll go through it. Um, what you've got here is the pool itself, and on this particular uh, schematic, I've drawn a uh, a skimmer basket pool rather than a a deck level pool. So you've got water exiting the pool in two main areas you've got the surface water draw off system so it, the water comes through the skimmer baskets here and also via the sumps or drains a typical distribution between these two outlets is usually 20% uh, of water is going via the skimmers and 80% uh, of the water flow is down here at the at the sump so it comes through in this direction and we're in the plant room now and the water obviously is moving through the first thing it comes across if you were to you'll look at the two you'll, you'll usually have two main pipes coming in to the plant room one from the sumps and one from the skimmers or if it was a balance if it was a deck level pool it would be from the balance tank useful to have those labeled up so you uh, I haven't included the valves on here as I said to keep it nice and simple or as simple as I can but in a plant room you you would expect to find that these two incoming lines from the um, pool would be valved up there may even be a third one a lot of pools have a third one um, a smaller diameter line coming in from the pool which is you'll usually find it in the closed position um, the valve from on this third line that I haven't included on this schematic but that's usually a vacuum uh, attachment so that you can attach a hose and vacuum the pool but I've left that off this this particular schematic what you've got here these two components are uh, strainer baskets or pre-pump strainers um, the purpose of these is to protect the pumps, which is, which is the the next uh, the next component. These two here are the actual pumps. So they're the pumps are the heart of the system, if you like. The pumps are actually moving water through. So what they're doing is they're creating suction on this side of the system. They're they're, they're drawing water through, and then on this side. Of the system everything's under pressure so what happens after the pumps the water goes through into the the filters and on this particular schematic what I've done is I've included two filters uh, working in parallel you know some some systems only have one filter some systems have more than two filters it really depends on the the size of the pool and the usage of it but it goes in at the top of the filters out um, at the bottom and then goes through to some form of uh, heat exchanger um, so what you might find is well what you will find on most commercial pools is the heat exchanger you'll see some lagged pipes um, go into the heat exchanger as well as the water pipe um, what the lag pipes are are the flow and return from your domestic hot water system and I haven't included that on that schematic because that's usually occur um, you know, either in a different room sometimes it's in the same room as the plant room but uh, usually on swimming pool schematics that's just uh, not included um, or else it would complicate things even further but what happens is the water then goes back and um, comes in at the the inlets um, and on this particular uh, example what I've done is I've included the inlets down at the shallow end but um, 
depending on the pool design, your inlets can be distributed throughout the pool. Other things to point out is what you'll typically also have in a, in a commercial swimming pool is um, some sort of monitoring, um, monitoring equipment that will be uh, continually um, testing the uh, pH and the free chlorine level. Um, so there will be a sample taken from the delivery side. Anything downstream of the pump is referred to as the delivery side, whereas anything upstream of the pump in terms of the direction of water flow, anything upstream of the pump is referred to as the suction side. So what happens is a sample of water is taken. It's a, a very sort of narrow, uh, well much narrower than the swimming pool circulation pipe work itself, a narrow flexible tube is taken um, is taken a sample of water from the delivery side sending it through the automatic monitoring equipment you know the computer CPU or whatever you want to call it on the wall um, that's giving you a digital readout of the, the chlorine and the pH and then it will either re-inject it back into the uh, suction side of the pumps or sometimes it just goes to uh, just sends it out to a to a drain on the floor um, but this monitoring equipment is linked up to your chlorine and your acid so this is is in constant communication with your acid and your chlorine and telling your chlorine to either pump or not pump because this monitoring equipment is is programmable you can program it to achieve achieve a certain set point so for example if you if you want to achieve a chlorine level of 2 in your swimming pool this might be programmed to achieve that so when it detects that in this sample that the water um, is starting to get to the point where it's achieving 2 parts per million maybe even slightly over it will tell the chlorine pump to stop pumping. Uh, when it detects that the chlorine levels are going a bit lower than what is what you've programmed it in it'll simply tell the chlorine pump to start pumping so it's it's uh, an automatic control rather than um, you having to constantly uh, manually dose and with the chlorine usually they're very alkaline substances so you usually have to use another substance that's acidic to bring the pH level back down because um, chlorine um, highly alkaline substances are high on the pH scale and what you want is an acid which is low on the pH scale. So the chlorine here is on this particular example is being dosed pre-filter. Uh, that's not always the case in some situations in some plant rooms you might find the chlorine is being dosed post-filter i.e. downstream of the filter so there's a bit of vari variability to where the chlorine is, is injected um, but on this particular example I've, I've got the chlorine being dosed in before the filters and then the acid is being dosed in after the filters which is fairly typical because acid being um, ha having the properties acid does it wouldn't be advantageous to be dosing the acid prior to for example the heat exchanger because the heat exchanger there then would come under uh, it would be you know, come under corrosion attack um, so the the acid is usually the final thing um, to be dosed into the system prior to it going back to pool. So it's a it's a complete circuit. It's very important, I think, for pool plant operators uh, to be aware of where the chlorine is being dosed and where the acid is being dosed. Because if you get those two mixed up, even in the pipe work, there's been incidents of um, the chlorine and acid being combined in the pipe work and creating a, a chlorine gas incident. But having knowledge of where your chemicals are being dosed in is extremely important, I think. Uh, what I've also got here is PAC uh, polyaluminium chloride, which is a coagulant that is being dosed in prior to the filters so that it, it basically helps the filters by flocculating or coagulating um, very small particles of pollution into larger um, uh, flocks they're referred to so that the filters are able to um, retain more pollution that way.